What's going on guys? It's Louis here from ConcordWealth.net, your uh, personal trainer, life coach, clinical nutritionist, and now I guess vestibular migraine slash neuritis uh, sufferer, to be honest. Now, um, the reason I wanted to do today's video is that vestibular migraine, vestibular neuritis is, is a really complex condition to work out. And it's kind of, it's pretty scary, to be honest. Now, my journey is interesting. It's not, it's a, it's a little bit dissimilar to what I've seen from other people's journeys. Um, and I wanted to do today's video because I wanted to go through the symptoms, my journey, put some people at ease. So, you, you know, you're scared, you're nervous, you think it's something else and it's not vestibular migraine or vestibular neuritis. And, and you just want a calming voice and a calming vi figure to, let me pull this down a little bit, to, to kind of talk about the condition and the symptoms and what they're doing to get better and actually attack it head on because there's so much kind of information out there and it's not clear what you have. You, you know, you feel dizzy and you feel all these weird symptoms. You think, what the hell's going on? Have I got, am I having a stroke? Have I got MS? Am I, have I got a brain tumor? I mean, is, is it my year? I, I don't know what's going on. And it can be kind of really scary, to be honest. You can't think properly because of the brain fog, fog and whatnot. And you, you just want to hear somebody talk about their symptoms and talk about what they're doing to, to get better. So this is what I'm going to do today. There's not going to be any negative crap on here. I'm all about positivity um, as and where we can get it. And, and this is what I do is I do... Um, clinical nutrition I love training I love psychology and you know I've been struck down with the illness and you know I was scared for a period of time because I take my health so consciously and you know I like to take it into my own hands as much as possible so going on the journey to healing is kind of a natural process to me but figuring out what was going on wasn't easy so let me talk about what happened with me. Um, I actually, uh, very lucky to be alive, about 15 months ago, um, what was that, about November 2018, I was actually rushed into hospital with myocarditis, which is inflammation of the heart. Um, quite a serious, or a very serious condition that some people can just collapse and die from. And I was in hospital for, oh, I was in hospital for about, 12 days from that condition. But while I was in hospital, I started getting these really weird dizzy spells where I feel like, I suppose kind of lightheaded, just not quite with it. And I kept saying to the doctors like, well, what's going on? They were like, well, we don't know. Could be blood flow, could be probably the, all the beta blockers we're pumping you with and all the meds we're pumping you with. So I thought, probably is. It's quite a well-known side effect of, of beta blockers. now. I've never done drugs. I've never, I even hate pharmaceuticals, but at that point I had to be on something because my heart rate was at one point pumping at 260 and you know, I was going to die if I didn't do something. So it's long story short, I came out of hospital and <clears throat> I went on a fast for seven days. I went on a, a complete dry fast to cleanse my body of any inflammation and any crap. And then I started incorporating juices um, again after that. So I was just doing juices for another week. And I felt okay. You know, I was very nervous because of my heart. I didn't really feel much going on in terms of, I didn't feel ill or anything really. Just, just a lot of mental anxiety. So my first real kind of symptom or, or first bout of symptoms I got was about a month later, I'd say late January. I went out to eat with someone. I've started eating normally again. I always eat pretty well, a pretty paleo-ish with some cheats, 80% type diet. So 80% paleo and a little bit of cheating. And I was at a restaurant and all of a sudden I felt really frigging dizzy. Like, not like the room spinning, not vertigo, just like lightheaded. Oh, I feel like, God, what's going on? I feel like I'm going to pass out, head in my hands. You know, that feeling when you get up too quickly but it was there kind of quite constantly. I went on for a couple of hours, maybe even less, and then it went. And basically, I would keep getting these bouts on and off periodically for four or five months, feeling a bit dizzy, oh, just not quite with it. Then it would go, and then it would come again. 
maybe for a day, then it would go, then it would go, come for half an hour, then it would go. It was really periodic. Um, and, and I compete as a power lifter. So I was back to training, training my ass off, lifting heavy weights, you know, going for runs and, and eating pretty well. I was on a, a much lower dose of a beta blocker by this point from 10 down to two and a half. I whittled myself down with the idea of getting myself off because my heart damage isn't that bad. And, and I don't believe that pharmaceuticals are really an answer. I believe there is an answer in, in, in nature for most things, not all things, but most. And so anyway, I whittled myself down and thought, this isn't right. I just keep feeling like not with it and dizzy. It's got to be these beta blockers. I keep reading the, the forms. It says one of the side effects is dizziness, lightheadedness. It's got to be. What, what else can it be? So I go to the doctor and basically say, I want to come off the beta blockers. So they agree to trial it. I come off these things and I'm fine for a month, six weeks, maybe even a bit longer. I think, oh, well, that was it. That was nothing. Then I'd say about two months later, I get a sore right ear. Sore right ear for two days. I think nothing of it. I think, oh, my ear is killing me. For two weeks after that, I'm hit with like some mild vertigo, like I'm on a boat. Just there's no real neurological symptoms. I just feel like unsteady on my feet slightly. I work in a gym, I work in my own gyms. So every so often I feel a bit unsteady. I think, geez, man, I don't feel that great. I'm going out to eat and I feel a little bit rocky. It's not too bad. I was kind of getting by, goes again. I think, mm, don't know what that was all about. Must have had a bit of an ear infection. We're fine. Fast forward to August, things are starting to get a little bit worse without me knowing. So I'd be training in the gym and I'd have these like turns where I'm like, geez, man, I feel like I'm going to pass out. I feel like lightheaded. I feel like dizzy-ish again. I mean, what is going on? Is it my heart? I keep thinking it's my heart. I, I measure my heart. My heart feels fine. I, I measure my blood pressure. I look at my, my sugar levels. And I think, what is going on? You know, I'm pretty well versed with with health. I think this doesn't make any sense. So I go to Cyprus in August and I get my, my worst turn to the day. I'm out for dinner one day. I've been swimming and jogging every day. It's boiling hot. It's like 38 degrees, super humid. I'm out for dinner with my partner's, my girlfriend's family. And that is it. Like I'm at the dinner table. Oh my God. Like I am in a seriously bad state. The, the, the cloudiness, the brain fog, I feel like the floor is going like this. I'm like, I'm going to pass out. I'm actually going to faint. Then I start getting anxiety, which makes you worse with anything. So I get up, go to the toilet. I feel like I'm walking as if someone said to me, Louis, have 10 shots of vodka and just get on with your day as normal. So I'm walking and I'm thinking, shit, man, I feel drunk. I mean, what the fuck is going on here? This is not right. I'm in a toilet, cold water on my face. I come back, sit down. I'm getting really anxious. I'm thinking I'm having like some sort of stroke or, or heart issue at that point. And I say to the guys, look, I've got to finish the meal early. You've got to take me home. I feel rough. I go home. I lie flat on my back. I feel, I wouldn't say like a full vertigo, but I feel like lying on my back and I just feel like just a bit dizzy, like you're drunk, basically. Next day I wake up, I think, I better take some beta blockers. It might be my heart. Take some beta blockers. Still feel a bit off the next day, but not as bad. Day after that goes again. I think, geez, what is going on? I can't work this out. Anyway, August to December, I have a few minor spells like that. So this is like a year now of getting this shit. Um, I've had a, now, interestingly enough, I had a couple of migraines along the way one really bad one after a flight to barcelona and a couple of milder ones and my headaches were you know very much across the front sinus type feeling headache just so you you guys get an understanding because i know that people get headaches and or, or some some people don't get headaches with vestibular migraine some do and it's kind of nice to know where you're feeling that so that's what i was getting but i you know completely unrelated i think at this point so anyway comes to december i'm an entrepreneur super motivated i take a couple of weeks off feel great. Um, I've got my 2020 goals down, some powerlifting comps entered. Anyway, one week into January, that is it. I have a really dodge turn in the gym. I feel like shit. I feel dizzy every time I'm lifting something. I'm like, no, I can't do this. Got to back off my workout. Now I'm starting to feel a 
bit more concerned. This is just not right. Um, then three days later, I'm with a client. I'm on my phone, look down, look up. Oh, God, what is going on? I feel dizzy again, like I'm on a boat. Oh, suck it up, buttercup. You know, that's me. used to be a boxer, and I just suck things up a lot of the time. And I just, I don't know what this is. It doesn't, you know, like it wasn't relating to anything. Then Friday comes, two days after that. And that was when it all kicked off. Um, I'm sitting in the gym. All of a sudden, I think, oh, I've got, got like a funny feeling in my head. Like this funny sensation. A little bit hard to sort of explain, but it was like a, just like a sensation that my inside my head didn't feel right. That is it. Literally, I absolutely fall apart. My face goes numb. My hands go tingly. All numbness down my legs. Like, oh, that's, I'm having a stroke. I feel like all over the gaff, pins and needles everywhere, rush outside mid-client. I'm not sure I'm going to A&E again. So begrudgingly straight to A&E. They check me at a and I'm sitting in A&E for like four hours. Then they check me rather. I'm like panic attacking out as you would do. Um, and I'm sure most of you guys that have had this condition have done. Um, allow yourself that because it's, it's normal. You don't know what's going on. So don't anyone to let, let them tell you you're fucking crazy because you're not you know, it's completely rele relevant to be <laughs> anxious and depressed at this point or, or anxious, especially and panicky, maybe not depressed just yet. So <laughs> I, I'm checked by the doctor, doctor che checked all my sats, all my vitals, like, no, you're fine. You're just having vertigo. And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm not sure about this. This doesn't feel like vertigo. So he gives me some pills, basically like whatever, tells me to do one typical so I go away, I'm like, this is just not right. I'm not taking these pills. So the next day I ring a contact of mine and I go to urgent care. I think I'm going to get a second opinion off another doctor. Now I'm feeling like crap. I am probably, I'm dizzy constantly, by the way, after this episode. The numbness is gone, but I'm constantly like I'm on a boat. I'm rocking. Feels like somebody's pushing me in the back as I walk. So I'm walking too quick almost. Um, it's also like I'm on a boat and I've drunk 10 shots of vodka. Like the boat is rocking to the left and I fall a bit to the left, to the right. But I wasn't actually falling, just a sensation that I was. Um, I had like, pressure in my head and just this, this weird feeling inside my head. Not just pressure, just like a feeling that my head brain wasn't quite right across here, this area. So I go to urgent care and the urgent care practitioner... Same thing, he checks me over, checks on my vitals, listens to the history, says you've got BBPV, benign positional uh, vertigo, however you, however you pronounce it. I thought, nah, I've been doing my reading on this. It's, it's not, I, I just know it's not. So I go away and for two, three days, I'm still feeling horrendous, same thing. I'm getting even more dizzy. Um, I can barely go to work because I work in lights and music at the gym. I think, let me go outside for a walk. I feel like shit on my walk, like unsteady, dizzy, lightheaded. I go to the supermarket, things get a hundred times worse and I still don't know what's going on. I think, I don't think I'm going mad. I know something's wrong, but now I'm panicking. Now I'm like, I've got a brain tumor or I've got MS. Those are the two things I thought, or I've had a stroke rather. So those three things. I thought, I haven't had a stroke. Doesn't make sense. So now I'm thinking I'm nailed on. I've got a brain tumor. I've got MS with the the weird tingling and whatnot. So I then, what happens? I then go to my GP, force an appointment through, go to my GP. She does a load of tests on me. And she's like, well, neurologically, you seem fine. Your balance seems okay. And I'm saying, I think it's something to do with my inner ear. And she's like, oh, I don't know. I said, look, here's a referral form. I'd already talked to my private healthcare. I, I want to go to an ENT specialist. I mean, thank goodness I had enough nous and enough physical knowledge of, of how the body works from years of doing my job. I just had an inkling that it was either neuro, obviously neurological, but maybe um, in an ear slash type issue or vestibular. So I've been doing obviously a bit of Dr. Google as we all do, I'm sure. And... Uh, so I go to my osteopath the next day, same thing. Says your inner ear seems fine. Done all, uh, your ears, sorry, your middle ear and your ear seems fine. 
your neurological symptoms are all fine, maybe it could be inner ear. So I go to the ENT specialist, Dr. Alam Hanan. If you're in London, highly recommend him. The geezer's friggin' awesome. Um, not so much in the, in the knowledge, because yes, the knowledge is, is there with, with a lot of them, but just his way, his demeanor, very calm and he really listens. So if you are in and around London, I, I massively recommend him because he will listen to you and he won't just fob you off. So I sit down with him, does a load of tests. He says, I think you've got vestibular migraines or vestibular neuritis. Now I'd come to the conclusion of labyrinthitis, but his uh, diagnosis made more sense. So he says, we're going to go for an audiology test and we're going to go for an MRI. Well, it's another bit of drama. So I go for the, the audiology and, and hearing test. That's a 10 out of 10. I didn't find that out at the time. I found that. Um, actually, I did. Yeah, I found that out at the time. So I had my hearing test, my ear pressure test. That was 10 out of 10. Then, what was it? It was later, a week before that, sorry. I was due to go to an MRI. Now, I'm severely claustrophobic. I have real problems with claustrophobia. Um, I last five minutes in the scanner. Can't do it. Like, I just freak out. And um, that's another issue that I'm working on. A week later, after the audio test, I go for an open MRI. Again, they're friggin' awesome. If anyone struggles with an MRI scanner, you sit upright, watch a TV in front of you, and the scan took half the time. So I had a brain scan and an inner ear scan. I wait a week. They send me the report. Comes back all clear, thank God, because I was shitting myself. So now I know no brain issue, no tumours or anything, and it's, it's not MS. So I go back to him, vestibular migraines, vestibular neuritis. Okay, fine. I'm cool with that. Now I know what the issue is. So, I mean, once I got a diagnosis and, and I had the MRI, my anxiety came down a lot. There's so much anxiety with this condition that anxiety can, it, it does, not can, it exacerbates everything times 10. And I was anxious as a hell. Like I felt awful. Um, I just couldn't stop ruminating on what's happened, what like this happening with my brain or MS or brain tumor. I just felt so awful that I couldn't even do my rehab or attempt to do any kind of rehab and take any information on properly. I just look, kept looking at different causes. So the first thing, getting a diagnosis was so important. Um, so symptom wise, I think it's really important. I kind of list these out for everyone. Symptom wise, I have or had, I am starting to feel a lot better. I'm about probably anything between 75 and 90%, depending on the day. Like right now, I feel about 85%. My head doesn't feel 100% right. And I'm a bit off balance, but I'm okay. So my symptoms were severe, like a chronic lightheadedness and dizziness. Now, my dizziness wasn't spinning. I will say that again as such. It was like, I was like, I've drunk too much and I'm lying in bed and I'm just going, oh, I feel so dizzy and ill and seasick or car sick. Um, when I went to walk, it was like someone was pushing me in the back constantly. I was walking too quick. Um, I, it was like I would rock into the left, rock into the right. Um, like I just felt unsteady, like I was constantly rocking like this. If I was like go for a piss on the toilet, I, I was leaning forward too much, then rocking back too much. Um, yeah, so that was that side of things. I had like a sinus pressure, which was horrendous. Like someone was gripping my, my nose here, and so much pressure over here and over here, but it wasn't so much pain. It's like a pressure as if there's a fist or something inside your head pushing out, like there's not enough space in that area. And, and that, that was pretty minging as well. But I kind of felt a little bit better before my diagnosis because I thought this has got to be linked to maybe it's like a migraine or an inner ear. Um, I had really bad fullness in both ears. Um, like they're just full of water, like in deep. And I just wanted to pop them all the time. Um, slightly more in my right ear than my left. What else do I have? I had obviously anxiety and like properly depressed. I mean... I just couldn't even get out of bed some days. I was so depressed. I mean, it's like a complete hindrance to my life. Uh, tinnitus, yeah, I've got ringing in the ears, which drives me mad a little bit. It's not that severe, but it's really noticeable at night. It's just a constant, like, 
high pitched buzz, like a kind of that's 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 my impression. But you can relate to it, some of you guys. It's constantly like that. Um, and I think that was probably my my main symptoms. So I've gone from feeling like ten percent to feeling 85%, 90%, 95, 75, depending on what I'm doing. I'm one of the people that feels better when I drive. So I love driving because it focuses me and I feel a lot better. I feel better if I'm outside. I feel worse if I'm in a gym environment with the noise, the lights, or in a supermarket, somewhere like that. A lot of fluorescent lights and people and, and things to look at. And, and I think that's kind of normal with this vestibular migraine condition. Um, so I've improved a lot. What am I doing to improve? Now that's, that's a big thing, right? So I'm hitting it from multi angles, to be honest. Um, I'm doing vestibular rehab therapy. So things like, you know, watching my finger, constantly moving my head to the left and right whilst keeping my eyes on the finger up and down back and forward, eye press ups. Uh, I've got like a ball, tennis ball that I'm throwing around, standing on one leg and I'm looking up and down and catching that, um, doing things with my eyes closed on one leg. I mean, I'm like uber fit anyway. Like I've always done high level sports with boxing and, and martial arts and now powerlifting. So my balance has not been compromised, just the perception of my balance being compromised. Um, so yeah, I'm doing vestibular rehab therapy quite a couple of times a day. Um, one big thing for me was adopting a super strict ketogenic diet. Um, all I'm doing is organic meats, wild caught fishes, above ground vegetables, um, some soaked nuts and seeds, um, coconut oil, coconut milk, avocados. Um, and that is it. I, I'm not bothered by that. I kind of like eating meats and fishes and um, a, like a low carb diet and I f that has been a big thing for me I I have to say once I started the diet within a week I noticed some of the edge had come off the symptoms they ain't gone but it had gone from feeling like a three out of ten to maybe like a five or a six with ten being the best I thought mm, this is interesting and as the weeks have gone on I, I haven't deviated at all it's been probably 16 or 17 days keto now and I have to say that's been one of the biggest factors. Migraines and epilepsy are quite close cousins. They're neurological disorders. And one of the best and most, um, the most proven trusted treatments for epilepsy is a ketogenic diet. So I figure that it's massively anti-inflammatory. Um, it's a preferred source of fuel by the brain and by the body. Um, let me go ke uh, ketones that is let me go ketogenic and cut out any glucose any carbohydrate of any type and let my body's inflammation settle down and and, and excitability for, of my brain and inflammation of my brain i have to say that's been a huge thing for me um been doing some supplements as well and uh, magnesium multivitamins um i was doing b2 didn't i didn't think it was necessary to be honest um with, with me eating a high kind of keto diet. Uh, what else am I doing? Digestive enzymes, apple cider vinegar, which I kind of always done anyway, probiotics, um, four grams of vitamin C a day, um, uh, about 2,400 milligrams of wild Alaskan fish oils per day, uh, magnesium, 400 milligrams per day, a magnesium complex. So it's got taurate, citrate, um, glycinate i think is it in there so i'm doing magnesium uh 22 milligrams of zinc picolinate and i take a, a high strength curcumin supplement for inflammation those things have definitely helped and coenzyme q10 for mitochondria support which is really important and i have to say those things all those things combined are really helping me and uh, trying to have as positive an attitude as i can even when you feel awful and with the ketogenic diet, the vestibular rehab, the supplements, I have been improving hugely. There's underlying conditions, guys. When, when something like this happens to you, there's normally an underlying, unless it was from a virus or a bacteria. Um, mine could have been caused from high stress from the heart condition or, or, or the same virus that caused my, my heart issue. 
but I do believe in a multi-stage approach to healing and hitting it from all angles. Um, I haven't tried any craniosteopathy or anything at the moment. I'm doing a lot of stretching, a lot of yoga, I'm back training again. Um, I have some neck issues from an old herniated disc, so I'm having some acupuncture on my neck. So I think just a combination of things, guys, um, the VT, uh, VR, sorry, vestibular rehab, the keto diet is a big thing. Research that. Research keto diet for migraines and check out the work of um, Dr. Elena Gross. She, she's fantastic and she specifically researches this area, keto and migraine, and she's a migraine sufferer, sufferer herself. Um, yeah, just hitting it from all angles and, and hopefully you start to feel better. Guys, if, if you like the video, you know anyone else is suffering, please, please bang the like button, um, share it. It does allow me, I do want to do a lot more videos on this condition and I will do a ton more and my progress and what, you know, how I've been getting on. But ultimately I'm feeling a lot better um, from my really bad chronic stage. And um, if you've got any comments, put them in the comment box below and I will answer them because I know it's quite a desperate time and uh, I will help you out. You can check out my website, www.conquerworth.net. I will link it below. Um, and I hope you, this helps you guys and you all start to feel better over time because it's not a nice condition. All right, take care, guys.